God's attributes are all equal. So what do I mean by attributes? God is love, that is an attribute, love, justice, kindness, forgiveness, meekness, goodness, all these are attributes of God. Now, in all of his attributes, they're all equal, meaning love is not greater than justice, neither justice is greater than love. In other words, none of God's attributes can override the other. Love cannot override justice. Justice cannot override love because if there was an override in God's attributes, then there is contradiction in his nature, in his person. If, God's, if God contradicts himself, I cannot believe and trust in a God that changes his mind all the time. I cannot follow a God that switches from one thing to the other. Today he says one thing, tomorrow says another. The other day he comes with another word that overrides everything he said prior to it. I cannot believe, trust, and follow such a God. God must be the never changing, never, unable to change even if he tries to. Now this is what you call God. When he says one thing, it is forever. When he does one thing, it is forever. Because he is the never changing God. Never changing. If we were to say that God is love and he created me based on love, but when I broke his word, he said, well, you broke my word. I don't love you anymore. If he was a God that changes. And if he were to come back and say, I don't love you anymore, we're in deep trouble. He will destroy us all. Now, how often do we say things and do opposite to what we say? How many times we make promises and we break those promises? How often have we said to God, I am coming back this time to you, Lord. I'll never walk away from you. This time I'm all yours. Before we even blink our eyes, we've already changed our mind and we've done totally opposite to what we promised two seconds ago. And if God was like us, good luck. Nobody would have stayed alive on earth from the word go. Everybody would have been killed by God and thrown in hell. But we thank God that he never changes. We thank God that he never changes. We thank God he never changes. Um, But there is a problem in this as well. Because he never changes, there is an issue. God is facing a dilemma, if I may put it in a human level kind of an approach. When God created Adam, now, you probably have heard this before, but Adam... We cannot say Adam a human being. Why? Because a human being in the Hebrew Aramaic language, we call him Bar Nasha. Bar Nasha. Now, Bar, Bar means the sun. Nasha, man. So, Bar Nasha means the son of man. See, the Lord Jesus, in the gospel according to St. Matthew, he was referred to as the Son of Man. You will find this quite regularly mentioned in Matthew, 
the son of man, the son of man, the son of man. The son of man meaning he came from another man, another human being, another person. But Adam came from the hands of God. Adam did not come from another human. Adam came from the hands of God. Therefore, Adam is God's creation, not Barnasha, son of man. Adam is God's creation. He came from God directly. Now, when God created Adam, the reason why God created Adam, as the Holy Bible tells us and teaches us, he created him on the basis of love. On the basis of love. Now, since God is love, he created Adam and everything visible and invisible, both physical and spiritual realms, everything God created with love. Angels, heavens, galaxies, universe, humanity, all creations, animals, plants, birds, you name it. Everything was created based on love. But there is a difference between the human race and every other creation of God's. The only creation out of the entire creations of God's that has the image and the likeness of God is the human race. The only. Angels not like humans. Angels are not. And let me add to this and go furthermore, the only creation out of all God's creations, both spiritual and physical realms, that were created from within, not from without God, is the human race. When God created Adam, the book of Genesis says that God breathed he breathed into Adam the breath of life. He breathed. Where did this breath come? From within. Not from without of God. From within. That breath of life came from inside of God and out. When he breathed into the nostrils of Adam. And then the Holy Bible says, And Adam became a living soul. We have a spirit, we have a body, but we don't have a soul, for we are a soul. So, we came from within of God. This is why he said to Adam, he is created in my image according to my likeness. In my image, according to my likeness. Now, image in the original text means icon, not picture. And this is where some Christians get it wrong. And they say, why do you have pictures in the church? It is wrong because God said to Moses, do not create or carve anything and then bow down and worship them. I say to people as such with love and respect, did God become a man or not? If you say no as a Christian, you're in deep trouble. Well, since God became a man, then did God have an image? They can't say no. So that's why I put an image in the church, not a picture. And it is thus quite okay to have that image or that icon in the church symbolically representing the Lord Jesus as a Chinese, as an African, as a European, as a Middle Eastern, American, Canadian, you name it. Why? Because the image is not the picture. Now, if I refer to this icon as a picture, then does Jesus look like this? No, I don't know. 
Well, I know, but you know what I mean. But he doesn't look like this one. He doesn't. Even though it's beautiful. But he doesn't look like 100%. Why? Because this is not a picture. When I take a picture of a person, that picture is what they look like exactly from outside. That picture looks is exactly them from outside. You take a photo of someone, this is how they look like in the real life. This is them. It's representing the person from outside. The image is an internal look, not an external one. So image means invisible, likeness means visible, external. So God created this human race, Adam, and he's called him my image according to my likeness. Image internally, likeness externally. And the word likeness, when you read it in the Greek text, it talks about a dummy, doll. Dummy. And what is a dummy? Statue. So God created the human being internally and externally. Internally icon, externally statue. 